Hey guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bassin. Today we are going bank fishing. I am on the road again. I'm out in Nevada, high elevation. Gonna chase some smallmouth. I did not bring the boat on this trip. Just on the shore. Gonna see if we can catch some fish. It's howling out there. I'm gonna go throw an S waiver, at least to start cover water quickly. Try and raise those fish up high in the water column. Uh, visibility looks to be two to four feet. Wind is blowing, I'd say 15, gusting to 40. Uh, it's a good day to not be on a boat. With that kind of water clarity, uh, the shoreline that I'm gonna be on is, is a pretty slow taper. So I think I can get these fish to come up high so that I don't risk getting snagged, but let's head out there and find out. I'm just upwind of you guys. I called you and yelled at you and texted you. <laughs> <laughs> but there's terrible reception. No worries. I have a fish. Bye. Bye. Oh, it's giant. Look at that football. Guys, I was talking on the phone and that one smashed the swim bait. Look how fat that fish is. Awesome. Here's a quick tip for you guys. Most people hate fishing in the wind. The reason that you hate the wind is not even the wind itself. It's the effects of the wind. It's that big bow in your line that gets laid out across the water, it creates all sorts of problems. So here is what I do to solve this. This is gonna make a huge difference for you the next time you're out in the wind. When you make your cast, right when it lands on the water, you immediately pull to the side, pull across your body into the wind and reel as fast as you can to take up the slack until you have a perfectly straight line on the water. What that does is it eliminates all of the slack and all of the bow in your line and leaves you perfectly connected 
to your bait. Let's watch that again. You fire out there as soon as it hits the water, pull down and across into the wind while burning in your extra slack until your line is perfectly straight. Now there are no negative effects from the wind and you have a perfect cast just as if it was a calm day. Now if you're firing around cover, if you need to land on a specific target, you throw past your target, pull into the wind, burn out that slack, get straightened out, and then swim your bait up to and past your target. If you do this effectively, you can even throw weightless baits in the wind. It will make a huge difference in your fishing. Oh, missed him. All right, guys, it is early June. I'm fully acclimated to the warm summer weather and it is like 45, 46 degrees out here. So I am gonna get off the water, get back to the camper, and then I'm gonna explain to you why I chose that area, what that fish was sitting on, uh, why I was able to target him. Granted, I did not catch a pile of fish, but that fish was right where he should have been. He was a good fish. We could replicate this, but frankly, I'm cold. So let's head back to the camper. I'll explain oh, a little man, bit. Man, it's a lot nicer in here than it is out there. Jeez. All right, guys. So this lake that I'm on, I've been here one other time. It was by boat about three years ago during a drought. The lake was 40 to 50 feet lower than it is right now. So this is a brand new lake. I mean, the stuff that I just fished was so far out of the water, it wasn't even funny before. Um, so I've never been here, at least not under these conditions at all. So what I did when I arrived is I looked at my shoreline. About half the lake is inaccessible. Uh, you just can't get there by foot. So I looked at the half that I had access to, and I chose the windblown side. I wanted to put the odds in my favor as much as possible. So I chose the windblown side. I came down here, started looking at the windy side of the lake, and I noticed the last time I was here, there was virtually no cover in the water whatsoever. This time, because the lake was low, some trees and brush had grown up and is now flooded. You guys could probably see that if you were looking close. I was throwing out to a submerged brush line and then larger trees right along the shoreline. So I chose this area because it's windblown and because it had key cover features on it, key pieces of cover that the fish could get in. The rest of the shoreline is just barren shoreline. You have to cover an incredible amount of water when you're throwing a search bait like this, just hoping to pull up a fish. But by fishing this area where I had those key targets, I could just throw to that brush because I know that the biggest smallmouth on the shore are going to sit on the best pieces of cover. Now, like I said in the beginning, I went with that small S waiver, the S waiver 168. Uh, and my reasoning behind that is that I could keep it high in the water column, but by throwing that light trout color, it's a very bold color in the water. And I thought my visibility was two to four feet. It was more like one to two feet, but with that bold color, they were still able to find it. I got two bites, the one that I caught, and then one back there in the back of that pocket that just popped it and I swung and there was nothing there and he never came back. But I got two shots out there. Now, gear wise, I actually went a lot lighter than normal couple reasons for that. First is that because I'm on the shore, I didn't want to carry a ton of tackle. I literally carried one rod. Uh, what I was throwing was a GLX. It's an 8, 843. What that is, is a seven foot rod, seven foot three power. So truly a seven foot medium, literally the most universal rod that you could own. You can throw almost anything on it. It's much lighter than what I like to throw an S waiver on normally. 
But what that allowed me to do is I was able to drop down a lighter line. I was throwing only a 12 pound leader and I fished it with stock hooks on it. By sticking with stock hooks, I was able to get away with that light tackle. And what that meant is that if this plan didn't work, I could have switched over to a lighter wire Kitek uh, or a light wire jig, a Senko, a variety of things if I was able to find calmer water to fish in. So I adapted the equipment so that I could do the maximum amount of things with a single rod. If you're a bank guy, really take that into consideration. It makes a big, big difference if you simplify. So I fished that 843 and a Corrado 70 because from sure I don't need a ton of line capacity. These fish aren't even a big fish. It's not going to rip out a ton of line. So I had plenty of line there. No issues. And then, like I said, the fish were on those key structures. They bit on the typically the front side of that brush. One bit on the front side, one followed it from the front side, and then bit it on the back side. But they were sitting right where they should have been sitting. I mean, spot on spot. If I wasn't such a wimp and tired of the cold, I think we could probably get another half dozen bites out there from the shore. No problem. All right, guys, let's wrap it up there. I hope you enjoyed this. It's not often that I get out on the shore, but when I do, I have a blast. It was awesome to catch a really, really nice smallmouth from the shoreline. I'm glad you guys could be a part of that. That was a lot of fun. Let's wrap it up. If you enjoyed the video, hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel. Down below in the video description, we'll include links to all of the equipment, just like we always do. Uh, and I'll give you the other baits that I had planned on throwing as well, although I didn't even get to them. But thanks for coming along, guys. Appreciate you. Have a good day.